Today, we'll be making an important upgrade to our Forerunner's rear suspension. In this video, we're going to be covering these five things. What these are and why we need them, what features we wanted in them, why we chose this particular brand, exactly how to install them, and other rear suspension component upgrades that we feel are a waste of money or are even harmful to do. And we're going to start right now. This video is brought to you by More Expo. Find out more about More Expo on their website. These are the lower links. They're here to keep the axle in position front to back while still allowing it to go up and down. But as you can see, they're in a very vulnerable place. Just one good hit on a rock can bend these thin walled stock links into a pretzel. That's why we're gonna change ours out to these much more heavy duty ones. These are the features we wanted in our new links. Most importantly, a much greater wall thickness. The stock links are a disappointing eighth of an inch thick. Our new links are a full quarter inch thick, much stronger. We'd like to send out a huge thanks to our friend Dan who sacrificed a spare link just to find out how thin they actually are. Offset eyes on the axle mount. With an extended down travel rear suspension like ours, the stock link can actually hit the axle right here at full drop, limiting that down travel. This will solve that problem and give us another inch or so of drop. The front mounting eye is offset too. I'm not sure that's really necessary, but it does give a little bit more ground clearance up front here. We wanted non-adjustable links. Here's why. Adjusting the pinion angle after a three inch lift really isn't necessary. There's no solid evidence that shows that this slight angle change causes any long-term negative effects. But the biggest reason we don't want adjustable is the constant attention the lock nuts need. They loosen up, and when they do, the threads cut in the bar and the joint are allowed to bang against each other. Over time, those threads will completely wear out and the joint will actually come out of the bar. Not a good thing to happen when you're driving. Those features narrowed down our choices considerably. Now, this is why we chose the ones Sonora Steel makes. Other than the fact that they're exactly what we were looking for, it came down to lead time. When I asked, they said it was going to be four to six weeks out. Not unusual. Other manufacturers were as much as six months out. And some are a little less than honest about their lead times. After five weeks of placing our order, we found them sitting on our front porch. What proved to us that we made the right choice, though, was when the owner called us to talk about our choice in bushings. They offer two choices, the stock rubber type or poly bushings. On the order form, I chose the OEM type. He recommended that we go with the poly bushings because we have the long travel, and these hold up much better to that increased side load and twisting action. He had both styles in stock, and they're the same price, so it wasn't like he was trying to upsell us on anything. I was impressed that he took the time to make sure we had what we needed. Installation couldn't be easier, it's basically just three bolts out, here, here, and at the axle. Spread a bunch of grease on everything new, and the three bolts go back in. We have jack stands, one on each side, taking most of the weight of the forerunner, and two underneath the axle holding it up. We also have a ratchet strap hooked onto the axle, and the other end up to a point on the frame. This will keep the axle from possibly going backwards when we take the bolts out. Before we put the bushings in our new links, we're going to grease up everything really good with the grease the manufacturer supplies. These are two-piece bushings and there's going to be a space between the two in the center of the eye. So I want to make sure that there gets to be plenty of grease in that void in the center. We put the pin in, and that also has to be greased up really good.
a little of the same grease at the mount won't hurt either. Now before I put the nuts on these bolts, I want to make sure that there's no grease on there. Before we tighten them down with the torque wrench, we need to put all of the weight on the suspension. Now we want to talk about a couple of component upgrades we feel aren't necessary. But before we do that, I want to take it just a couple of seconds and show you our old links. This is the driver's side and this is the front uh, mount. And we hit something pretty hard somewhere along the line because there is a heck of a dent in it and it's curved a little bit. And on both links, remember how we talked about it hitting the axle in the back? All the paint is rubbed off on both links, so we were definitely limiting our down travel. Now we already talked about us not being big fans of adjustable link ends, so we won't go through that again. For most builds, especially those geared towards overlanding or moderate to light wheeling, you don't need heavy duty upper links. A couple of reasons why you're better off with the stock upper links. The engineers at Toyota designed them to be those thin solid rods because they're meant to twist, kind of like torsion bars. If you take that ability to twist away, eventually something is going to give, the bushings or the mounting brackets themselves. Because of the extended down travel that we get from our springs and shocks from Toytec lifts, at full drop, the driver's side upper link gets very close to the gas tank. If the link was a larger diameter, it might even hit the gas tank. You don't need a longer length pan hard bar after doing a two to three inch lift to fix that offset geometry. It won't truly fix the problem. The best fix is to weld on this simple bracket that will get the bar back to level or parallel with the axle. Here's a couple of videos we think you'll be interested in. If you like this video, hit the like button. And we hope you'll consider subscribing to our channel. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.